No. Good morning, Shelby. How yeah. are you? Uh, <laughs> I look gross. Yeah, me too. Up. Me too. Disgusting. The plan for today is, if everything goes well, we're going to get to Toronto and we're going to get to uh, Shelby's aunt's house. Um, where we will be doing laundry and showering and basically we've just kind of been putting everything off until we get there because uh, the van's a mess. Um, but also on top of that we're also trying to revamp um, big parts of our, our, our YouTube and you know everything else so we're hoping to redo all of our Patreon stuff so we'll be coming out with a video explaining how we're going to run our Patreon because we're part of this summer is, is basically to figure out how to financially make the next leg of our trip viable. <laughs> um, so part of it is just working and, and saving up money, but also part of it is like, you know, if we can make money um, making videos and, and working and uploading and editing all these, then we're going to try it. But um, I just want to stress right from the start, that, like the once every other day videos shouldn't change. I mean, unless like I'm really working a lot and I'm not making anything interesting, I'll still be uploading um, stuff about our travels, but again, that, that's the kind of thing, like, if we can support ourselves from the videos, we can make more videos, and, uh, if we can't, then, you know, I'll be working more, and we'll probably be uploading a little bit less during the summer, but that's okay. Still got some great plans for next winter, which I am already really excited for, even though we just got back yeah. to home area. We're pretty, uh, we're stoked to go further than the U.S. Further. next summer, and, or next winter, I mean. And we are looking at inviting some other cool van lifers and YouTubers. And you know who they are. And you know them, so you'll be excited. Yes. Yeah. Once we figure that out, yeah. for sure. We'll announce it once we Yeah, know. <laughs> once, once we actually going. know if that's yeah. happening for real. Um, but if you guys have any ideas and things that, that you want, I mean, people have already told us stuff, like people have asked us if we'll, we'll sell some of our, our photography prints and stuff like that, and we're looking into that. But if you have things that you really think that we should offer on our Patreon or something that you you really want us to offer in terms of like some kind of merchandise or something, let us know. And if enough, because if enough people tell us, we'll, totally we'll actually it. believe it. But some people have said, you know, I want a t-shirt. And I'm like, okay, I think you're the only person that wants a t-shirt. But, you know, if like 20 people tell us that they would actually buy a t-shirt, maybe we'll make some t-shirts. So. Maybe we will. Um, you know, nothing weird though. That would be great. Just nothing, nothing yeah. weird. That'd be wonderful. We're thinking about toques. Toques, toques. Because, uh, you know, we're Canadian and our heads are always cold. What if we mailed so. people poots in? Yeah. Like in the mail. Let's try that. That would be a biological disaster. <laughs> okay, we're going to um, finish cleaning up and we're going to hit the road. Let's get out of this Walmart. Yeah, no, there's more batteries in the back. So you told the GPS to go to Canada? Yeah, and it's like three million, four million roads analyzed, analyzing what is Canada. I do not know. I just said Toronto. Let's go to Toronto. But or as they say in Toronto, Toronto. Let's go to Toronto. But you know that... Uh, They're like our New York. Does, does the GPS not know it's from Canada? No, it's from China. <laughs> it's no, clearly from but China. We got it. <laughs> it's clearly from China. Analyzing 300 million streets. Well, I just figured Toronto is too complicated for our GPS. You know, maybe it's frozen because it's so cold. Come on. Maybe it just hasn't been to Canada in so long it doesn't know where what Canada is, it is doing? anymore. You know, we have an like an actual map. I can look at it. This is so boring. This, no, this thing is supposed to... It's just... Every once in a while, it throws us for a loop. This freaking guy, man. We have an actual map and we have our phones, but let's use the GPS that doesn't work. It's not even that far. Brantford's like a two-hour drive from here. What are you doing? <laughs> Oh yeah, we changed our destination. It's the border crossing that's messing it up. We changed our destination to Brantford. Yeah, we just, I just figured Toronto was too complicated. I get, I'm complicated by Toronto all the time, I get it. Like, how does a city this big exist in Canada? What are all these people doing? What is the DVP? I don't know. Which way to Canada? Turkeys! Yeah, crazy turkeys. Which way? I think that's the wrong way. So, we are on our way into Canada now, 
No, but... we got to stop because we have to eat all the food that we're not allowed to bring across the border. Yeah. So... Including dogs. You're not allowed to bring dog meat across the border. Sorry, champ. Yeah, so we didn't realize how close we were to the... <laughs> He's so whimpering. We didn't realize how She's close we were to the border, so we basically drove up to it and then realized, Oh, shit! shit. <laughs> Turn around. So we turned around. Now we have to eat all of our fruits, vegetables, meat, dairy. Um, <laughs> Spooky. <Champ laughs> we have to find our passports and champ papers. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> then we'll be ready to go. Champ has to cough out his papers. <laughs> okay, let's have some lunch. Let's have some lunch. For lunch, I have prepared for you a lot of vegetables and meats. We're not allowed to bring them across the border. So we're going to have to creatively combine everything. Don't Dude, throw anything out. What I think is funny, though, about the border policies is that I don't think anyone actually knows what they are. Like, everyone knows there's mm, there's some, like, meats and fruits and vegetables and Maybe. plants and seeds and I things. Don't know. And no one really knows I'm for sure. I'm pretty sure you're not allowed to bring across, like, a live donkey. <laughs> But, like, it, if you go on the websites and you read them, it's, like, so confusing that yeah. no one actually remembers it. Like, they don't just have, like, a simple list. It's No. It's quite confusing. It's not a system built for efficiency. We also have to figure out what to do with these plants. I don't, they're from California. I don't think we're allowed to bring them. I think we're just going to hide them, though. So this is my lunch plan. We have a lot of these sprouts. Uh, Austin gave these to us, and I have these just... Well, anyway, I have a lot of veggies in the bag of them, so massively overloaded omelette is going into my sandwich. That's the deal. Cut me to piece of bread. If you're going to make grilled cheese, you should make it fun. Or what are you going to make? Oh my god. <laughs> On your plate. There's just a lot going on in the sandwich. It's good though. All right, so to get across the border, we gotta get rid of these regular peppers. Those are like mini ones, but they're not uh, spicy. I got this big bin of sprouts. I've got four eggs here, a little bit of pepperoni, and some mozzarella cheese. Oh, and this giant cabbage here. But I'm not gonna do anything with that. But this, I think I can cook this all together and Champ and I will split it, because I can't eat all that. But I know someone who can. This furry little bugger right here. I'm digging our passports out. Found this passport, so that's good. That is a lot, a lot of sweet peppers. And some pepperoni. So let's let that cook for a bit, and we'll add some, uh, some other stuff. Eat your sprouts. Eat your sprouts. It's good for you. Come on, give it a shot. Give it, yeah, just a little bit. Yeah, he's like, no, nobody, no. nobody wants these. He wants my grilled cheese. I did my best, but given the massive amount of ingredients in this thing, it wouldn't really flip right. That's okay, I'm sure Champ won't mind. Alright, my review of the, uh, Cross the Border Medley. Um, you know, it, it definitely has some complexity to it. There's, uh, a lot of sweet pepper for sure. Um, and, and it risks being overbearing, but, you know, the, uh, that pe pepperoni really brings it back a notch. <laughs> Champ, what do, what do you think? What's your opinion? What's your opinion on it? Here, just... Mm hmm Yeah, no, I agree. That's a lot of licking and a lot of slobber. That's very interesting. I didn't, I hadn't thought of it that way. You know? Because I'm a human and not a dog. Mostly. That's Canada! Dirty bee! So I just went through to the RV section. Um, I don't know if that is a really big mistake. I never know with this van whether like people consider it an RV or a van. It's always been kind of up in the air. I mean like to people who know it's a B-class RV. This guy just signaled me. Okay, let's go. We're free. We're in Canada. That was almost as easy as when we first came to the United States. Yeah, it took one look at us. I don't think he even, like... It's just, he had no idea, like, what we were doing, where we are going, really. Just like, oh, crap, you're from Ontario. Whoa, you came far. <laughs> Here's your passports. Bye! You know, Ontario. like... 
Welcome to the land of the potholes. Uh, I don't know, New York is pretty potholy. Yeah. Simon, can you explain the excitement that is going on right now? Uh, I just got a big stupid grin on my face. Like, I don't know, I was never a patriotic person about being Canadian before we left. Like, I really wasn't. Like, I know my country has so many problems, and there's so much that I was just obsessed with that I just wanted to change and I didn't like. But then after being gone for a while, you're just, you're filled with this, I don't know, maybe it's nostalgia, maybe it's patriotism, I don't know, but I see like a Tim Hortons and I get giddy, you know? I like, I see air posted, everything's in metric and I get happy. The little things, it's really not that different. It's very subtle. But um, I know, it feels good to be back home for sure. Shelby, where have you taken me? So we're at the Woodland Cultural Center in Brantford, and there's an exhibition here by James Luna, an indigenous artist who does a lot of photography and performance, and I'm really interested to see his work, and I've never been here. Um, we never really go past Toronto. Um, so yeah, ne never go south of Toronto. Yeah, really. we never really go south of Toronto when we're traveling, so um, I've never been to Brantford, and it's a, a six, there's a Six Nations Reserve here, and I think it's the biggest Six Nations Reserve in Canada, which is really cool, and I should really see it. Because you're a Six Nations. I am. I'm all, all six, six of them. Six, that's no, you. I'm only one of them. <laughs> so we're going to go check it out. There's the Haudenosaunee to the south and the Huron to the north, and they're always fighting each other. Um, and then when the Europeans came and they brought diseases and other things, it completely like the combination of those two things completely wiped out the people that were living here. So these were the ones that were between the two tribes and they were completely wiped out by Europeans? They were like a, ner a neutral Iroquoian tribe. Okay. As, as we've noticed in our camping lifestyle, that uh, if it weren't for those LED lights that we have, it's a pretty dark lifestyle without uh, all the city lights and the ambient lighting in the cities. So once we get out to the woods, we kind of feel a little bit like this. <laughs> It's real dark, real quick. This is like a bead representation of the Six Nations flag, and like I've seen that a million times before, but I never understood why it was purple and white. I didn't know what the significance was, but they're saying that when they made the wampum, there was only purple and white beads available. So that became the significance of those colors. So I was talking about um, all of the traditions that were changing in the 19th century, and it was saying that the Canadian government really wanted to impose on these indigenous men that they should be farming, but traditionally working the land and farming and collecting food was a female uh, job in in their culture. And so these men, because they were before they were warriors and they wanted to do a job that was akin to warriors, they decided that they were going to do iron work and they were going to go to New York City and to Toronto and they're going to build these tall like skyscrapers and do all the iron work because they would be you know like flying through the sky and all these tiny little beams it was scary and it was courageous and it would it would be akin to being a warrior this is an ad for the bell yeah like the phone company this is the exhibit we actually came to see. Um, 
which no offense to the rest of the exhibit, which was very interesting, but this guy, we saw him in Santa Fe. And he, James Luna. James Luna. And he did, he did this whole series where he took these traditional masks and he does self-portraiture a lot, um, much like Shelby does, but he's reacting to these and he's trying to like kind of imitate them. It's just great. I love the sense of humor. It's so great. It's interesting to note that this is the kind of like cultural um, reinterpretation that basically somebody, only somebody within that culture could do tastefully. I think so, yeah. I think that um, humor is like a really big thing in indigenous cultures. So like being able to laugh at yourself means that, like means like humility, right? Yeah. And so like, like people always have this like, really bad stereotype of a stoic Indian which is like not true at all because it's like really important in indigenous in like Aboriginal culture to be able to make fun of yourself yeah totally how would you explain the difference driving in Canada um, okay so uh, I used to have let's put it this way I used to have a raging hate on for drivers in Toronto and and most people I know especially the transport drivers, truck drivers or anything, they won't, they try as hard as they can not to drive in Toronto because it's a big city and people are like always in a rush and they just cut everyone off and no one, if you put your signal on, no one moves out of your way. Um, I used to, until I went to America and I had experienced some of your city driving. <laughs> These people are the friendliest folks I've ever met. I'm back in Toronto, like, this is easy. I put on my signal, maybe some people don't, you know, give me space, but at least, like, one person does. Like, uh, we, a whole time we were in the States, I didn't find, go to a single city where people were, like, respected that, like, you put your signal on, you don't cut that person off. Like, you let them merge, right? And there's a lot of other little things, but... Now I'm just, like, peachy keen in Toronto traffic. It's kind of nice. <laughs> relaxed. All you gotta do is put yourself through hell and then everything <laughs> else seems good. Everything else is it's the same. How do you guys do that though? Like every day I kill myself. It's the oh same it's the same though with the van thing, right? You know, yeah. shove your life into, into a, a van box, and then every rage and everything else is easy after that. Yeah. yeah. Well not everything, but you know, at least living quarter wise. My my uh my cancer is totally cured. <laughs> You're not dead, fool. Solved all of my problems. <laughs> we have arrived. Are you excited? Yes. What are you excited for? I'm never gonna drive again. Oh, that's true. Maybe for like eight hours. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. So um, that marks the end of leg one of our trip. Pretty much. And. I mean, it's not the end because we're still going to travel and we're still going to do stuff. But like, from leaving Algonquin Park to arriving here in Toronto, drove like 22,000 kilometers and uh, Van didn't die that much. More and no accidents. No. Um, no one got robbed. No. Nothing got stolen. No. No one got trip. injured. No one got injured. No one got hospitalized. Or no anything. hospital visits. No arrests, no tickets. Super lucky. So we were talking earlier as we were driving here, you know, we we're really talking about what the whole trip was about and 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 how we how we feel about it now that it's over really. And we were saying how a lot of people keep saying, Oh, your vacation's over now, oh your vacation's almost over. But I think when what they don't understand is this trip for us it wasn't a vacation. It was no. just like an extension of our life. And the and the other thing is like when you vacation, it's usually because you're leaving something that you don't want to be, you know? Like, you'll vacation because it's cold and you, you know, you'll go somewhere else. You'll vacation because you want to get away from your crappy job that you hate sitting filing papers. But, like, we're happy and excited to be home. We're mm -hmm. excited to get back to our job as photographers and we're excited about the clients that we're going to get to work with this summer. And we're excited about, like, all the things we get to do. And so, I think it's just, it's just separate opportunities. They're just you do different things while you're moving around and you do different things while you're kind of staying in one area but i don't really see it as like a vacation and then a going back to reality mm -hmm. i mean maybe after we think about it for the next few days or few weeks we'll, we'll really di we'll digest the yeah. the ideas more but for now i think that's something that is really important to us that people realize that they can set up their lives in such a way 
that they don't have to vacation from it, and that there's all just different, it's all just different parts of your life, right? So I'm really excited because being on the road for six months has actually made me excited to stay kind of still for a little while. And then after I sit still for a while, I'm probably going to want to get on the road again. Thanks for moving into a van with me. High five. All right. <laughs> <laughs>